Welcome everybody to another handyman project. Today, brakes on the beast. Yep, I got a squeaky noise. Sounds better here than you probably hear. But this is uh, something that I need to get done because I've got to work. So today we're going to be pulling these rotors off. The emergency brake is making a horrible racket inside these behind the rotors. So I wish I had my brother here. Prozac projects, you got to check him out. He does a lot of mechanical stuff. But I'm going to have to do this myself. But you know what they say, master of all? No, that's not what they say. Jack of all trades, master of none. That's me when it comes to this. I've done a few of these before. So let's get this rotor off. I'm going to pull two bolts right here. We're going to remove the brake pads and set them to the side and see if we can't get this rotor off. Fifteen sixteenths socket to pop these bolts out of the back. Got my breaker bar. Lefty loosey righty tidy. I got to figure that out. While I sit here and sweat and pop this apart, let me show you exactly what we're working on. My 2013 Nissan NV 3500. The beast. That is what we're working on today. Pull on this last bolt and dropping it. Here's something I learned. These brake calipers have a short brake line. So, get you a zip tie, pull it off, run a zip tie through it, around something else. This I'm going to use the leaf springs here. And the zip tie is too short. It was a good idea. We're going to do something a little different here. I'm going to run it through the bolt hole. I've got a Nope, that won't work either. <laughs> okay. Okay. I ran the zip tie through it, and I've got a stabilizer bar. We're going to try to do this with only two hands. There we go. I zip tied it to the stabilizer bar keeps it held up so it's not hanging from the brake line to damage it. So here's my rotor. I oiled this up the other day and I tried to pull it off after work one day. It just didn't work. So I put it all back together and figure I'd tackle it on a better day. So I went down to the local auto parts to get me a hammer to beat on this thing with because I didn't have one and to ask them if they had a rotor remove tool. They don't have nothing for this big. So this may not be the smartest thing, but handyman engineering, I've got a ratchet strap hooked to the rotor and a two by four block in the middle. So we're going to see if we get some tension on it. Then maybe I can beat on it and see if it comes off. So it is five hours later through a lot of stress and strain and oiling 
and going back and forth to the parts store trying to find something. I tried to get a bracket, tried to make my bracket. Then I come to find out all you needed is a bigger hammer. So, called my brother, that's what he told me. Sure enough, he's right. It's in three or four wax, the other side came right off. So, I'm on the other side now. Let's see if we get this one off. Okay. So you can see here, my sledgehammer. Going to find out you can't be shy. I'm going to have these turned anyways. I want you to know it, as soon as I start filming, this side be hard. The other side came right off. There I go, see that? Just had to whack it two or three times, but the spring inside was just demolished. See these, these are the same as Titans. Inside drums for the emergency brake get bound up. You can see all the oil, all the penetrating oil I put in there. So, yay, we get to take these to get resurfaced, re uh, and uh, they're going to return them for me. I'm going to put some new brake gems, but that's going to be tomorrow. I'm hot, sweaty, tired. i just been trying to get the drums off. Actually, they're discs, but they have a drum inside. So... Tomorrow we're going to put everything back together. Alright everybody, we are two days later now. Took my rotors in to get them turned. Showed back up the next day. They Somebody didn't write the right thing down so they never got turned. So they turned them yesterday. They did this one here. As you can tell it's shinier. But this one, they said that it was too damaged, so I guess I whacked it too hard. On the back side, there's a couple chipped edges. They said, I mean, they probably could have done it, I don't know. They said it was too damaged to do. So, I said, okay, fine. I've got it apart, I'm not putting it back together like that. So they ordered me a new one. So let's open that up and see what it looks like. Got my Leatherman Wingman, handy Leatherman. As much as everything else has been going on, and make sure this is right. Yep, two, four, six, eight. So it's an eight lug. So I want to make sure it's good. Nice looking rotor. Noisy neighbors. There we go. So, we can install those. And here is my new emergency brakes. They are like the drum style that go inside the rotor. So let's get those open. I've got to install those first before I can put the rotors on. Simple. But one thing I just realized it don't come with anything and I've got broken springs so we may have a predicament so let's start putting this inside of the hubs on the van and see how this is gonna all work out I found the culprit this is what was making all the noise in this hub it goes right up here in between the shoes it's the adjuster and apparently it had fallen loose all the way down and got wedged up underneath here so now we know what the noise is coming from which told us that our brake pads are completely gone there ain't much pad on there if you look at these new ones you can see it's got a little bit on the sides so these are all the way down the metal 
so I guess six years of using them and probably accidentally leaving them on once or twice doesn't do good. So let's pull, use our handy Leatherman, just pull these off. We're going to twist this little deal here. Should be able to push in on it. It should just spin. And I'm going to have to go find, I haven't done drums in forever. This usually spins just like that. Okay. Now it should pop off. There we go. Little tiny bracket there that slides off of there. Let's disconnect. Okay, so that was a little frustrating. I got it all together. You have to make sure that there's a little pin on the bottom that the cable pulls. You have to make sure it's pushed all the way in. And I mounted this side over here with the little tiny pin. And then I came over here and mounted the other one. And the piece that popped out, it's here on top. But here's the weird thing. Look how loose this is. So I'm assuming when the drum goes back on this, it keeps it centered. But this is just kind of bewildering to me. So anyways, let's grab that brand new drum and we're going to put it on first to make sure it fits. Well, I call it a drum. It's a rotor with the drum inside. Loosen this thing all the way down, and we're going to try to keep this centered. It's going to keep falling. Let's see what happens. Okay, just gonna push it. There we go. I just had to push the brake pads in a little bit and then line it up and it slides right on. Okay, this little tiny pin right here has a spring that goes over it. And it's got a flat spot on it and it slides over this. And this turns and locks and the spring keeps it tight. So the dilemma I have is for some reason the one for the left side is missing. The spring for it's all jumbled and messed up. And so, and you can see on the side of this, it's flat. So it's been rubbing in there for a while. We don't know where it went. I went down to the parts store. They said they could sell me an entire spring kit with every adjuster and everything for $50. I'm like, I'm not spending $50 when all I hate need is this little tiny pin. So I found these bolts and I found this spring. So what I'm gonna do, I got a whole bunch of multiple springs. This one looked close to this one here. It's just more compact. So I'm gonna cut it with my handy Leatherman and see if we can't somewhat duplicate the situation we have. Don't have to be pretty. The, uh, um, <clears throat> spring just keeps it tight so see if we could cut it good we cut it okay so i am going to i drill the hole in the little keeper where it slides through and then i got a lock nut so we're going to tighten it down to or hopefully it don't get loose so let's see how this all works together
Okay, so what I did on the other side is I got the spring and I put the spring on it then I set it in place where it goes slid it forward and slide my new bolt through the back side hold it with my finger and if you push the brake pad back, it kind of rests on a little ledge there and holds it. So then we're going to put my new spring on there. Hopefully it stays. Then we're going to put the new, then we'll put the, uh, looks like a, basically it's like a washer. So, see if we could get this to hold that flying off, get my lock nut and we are going to tighten it down a little bit. I want the lock nut to be able to keep it from backing off. Okay, get my handy Leatherman, see if I can't tighten it down. Okay, I got that side. Now, we're gonna put, don't want you to put the old one back on. As you can tell, there's two holes in this. We're gonna mount the spring to the second hole. Then we're gonna reach around. This is where things get tricky. So we are going to, there you go. You just lock it into its little spot. We put our pin in the back and it goes through the brake pad. You can't see, so I'm trying to give you guys a little bit of commentary. Okay, so now we hold the pin in the back with one finger, push forward on the brake pad with the other finger, or the thumb to hold it. We put our spring on. Then we got to line the little groove in the washer up with the flat part on the pin, which allows it to go in, and then you spin it. Spin it towards opposite, and you let go. There we go. Now we've got this top adjustment. It goes in the top, but we got to put the spring. Let's see if we can't move you guys up. Okay, there's a spring, hooks on both sides. Before I do that, I put the adjuster in here. The adjuster, spin it to both sides, lock in, you put the spring in, boom. It's just like the other side. So it's loose, and we're gonna loose, tighten this up, and let's go get the uh, rotor and then put it back on. Okay, I got me a screwdriver because I want to snug this uh, lock nut down just a hair bit more. So, because it was the whole thing was trying to spin, so I hold it in the back because it's a it's got a Phillips or a common on it. I just want those threads to just come up flush. There we go. Makes you feel a little bit more comfortable about that whole thing. Okay, this is the rotor we had turned. Let's see if we can get it to go back on. Just like that, look at that. It can't give up. There we go. <sighs> okay, now 
before I put this all back together, I decided to go ahead and put brand new brake shoes on the back since there's no sense of doing it later down the road. Before we uh, put the new brakes on, this is where the brake fluid is stored. We just un unhook it. I like to set it up like that because we're going to push in the brake pads and we want the pressure to be able to come out. You can see two pistons. One right here and one right here. I've got to push those back to be able to get the new pads in because that's what pushes the brake pads in. So we're going to press those in. Let's show you how I do that. Take my C clamp. And I. Big foot's in the way. There we go. This is awkward because the brake line is so short. I use these household hinges. And I slide them down and put them against the piston. Now. Tighten up the C-clamp so it gets tight. They have special tools for this, but I've never got around to buying one. You use any kind of metal plate. There we go. So now, I just press it in all the way back. The fluid is going back into the reservoir. You usually know when it's all the way back because it gets hard. Then when you need to release the pressure. It only takes a few minutes. Yep, all the way in there. Now we move the C-clamp to the other side. Move the little hinge over. Tighten it back down. Cinch it down. I can feel it pushing back. Okay, all done. Now we just slide the new pads in. And slide it on. Finally be done with this turkey. They look right. Handy Leatherman to cut the plastic off. And just slide these in. We know that the pads go inwards. This is one side done. Somebody else needs to do their brakes. Sometimes if you can't get it to go in, you start with the other side. This one usually goes in better than the other one. There you go. See? Just like that. Now we're going to lift it up and slide it onto our rotors. My two bolts. And we've got our brake caliper done. Let's see if we can slide it over the new rotor. Come on, baby. Never done a new rotor.
Okay, I'm gonna get the top one in. And maybe I can push the bottom one in. Here we go. These, I've always done it with old rotors, just replacing pads. Brand new rotor was a little bit snug and tight. But we're gonna, I put the top bolt in and then I was able to shift it down. Okay. Find my wrench. Okay, I found it on the other side underneath the van. We got it done. Wheels are on the ground. Three day project. Note to self. Order all the parts you think you need because you don't know if they have them. And they sometimes take a day or two to come in. That was one of my downfalls today. I had to wait till 2.30 to get those brakes. Cause I thought they would have them in stock. They, when I did the front ones, they had them in stock. So, and then make sure, stay on them and make sure those rotors get turned too, because that was another delay. But anyways, let's jump in the van and see if this thing is going to actually pump up and stop. Okay, let's put our valve cap back on. I mean, the lid, not valve cap. And let's go inside and see if we get this thing to start and move forward. Why I said, let's see if it starts. The other day I left the battery on. 
and uh, almost killed it. So I had to jump it to start it. Yep, brake's still pretty good. Just put it in drive. It doesn't want to move. I wonder if that's the emergency brakes. Emergency brake feels good now. Maybe I need to go backwards. Let me look at silver. So, when you're exhausted, you just don't think about everything. I had blocks in front of the front tires because this van's been up on jacks for three days. So it backed up just fine, but it would not go forward. I kind of looked up there and there's two blocks up there. So, let's try it again. And drive. And it's stopping. And let's put it in neutral. It rolls forward a little bit. Let's put the emergency brake on. It's holding it. Whew. All that work. Now let's just hope that everything, I'm gonna go back and double check the tires because that's number one. A lot of people don't think about that. When you drop a car back down on the ground, go back and double check everything. I did that, you guys saw me do that, but I'm gonna double check because like those blocks up front, when you're tired, you don't think about it. I had a wheel fall off on a car a long time ago when I was driving down the road. So we got to be safe and smart. Let's go check all the tires and make sure everything's good. Doesn't hurt to double check. They were still tight, but I gave them a little extra snug. We got it all done. Three day project. Should have been a two day project if uh, parts would have been available and things would have got done the way they should have got done. But we've got it done. I had to move my work a little bit just to get this done. This band brakes are very important. So I. Everybody wants to drive by. I learned a lot, never done this type of thing before. So don't be afraid to try new things. And don't get up, up frustrated. Think calmly. And I probably would have made a, less, a few less mistakes. But until the next project. Well, thank you again for everything. Give me a thumbs up if you found this interesting. And I appreciate all your support. So I'm looking forward to, I'm in the process of filming some other stuff too. So this truck behind me is one of my other projects. You'll be seeing that next, hopefully next. Um, I still got to work on that storage building, but I got a lot of stuff. Candy mans are always busy. I got millions of things I got to do. That's what my dad always says. I got millions of things I got to do. <laughs> now I know what that means. But anyways, until we meet again on the next handyman project, have fun, stay out of trouble. Okay, who's gonna help me clean up this mess? I don't know, I'll get the wife to help me. <laughs>